Hello and welcome to Mission TV Live. I'm so glad you could join us this evening. Tonight our topic is 600 years until Jesus comes. We will be having a Skype call with Elder Clyde Morgan. And I think you'll be interested, I know I'm interested to hear what he has to share with us this evening. And we have a few guests on the show with us tonight. We've got Luis and Kirk, who you're familiar with. You've seen them before on the live. And we also have Aunt Becky again, which is a privilege and a blessing. So I'll see you on the show. Well, here I am again, and I wanted to mention that John is hosting with me today. He was upset because he's not a guest, but he is a host on the show. So I, anyway. She didn't mention my name. He was upset. Our text that we've chosen this evening is in Ma um, Mark 16, and it is verse 17 and 18. We'll just read both of those, 17 and 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So a lot of things are to happen to those that follow, and in the lives of those that follow Christ. So it's an interesting show this evening, yes. it looks like. We've okay. got a couple of really cool things happening. Okay. And we're going to be talking with somebody that has a lot of knowledge about church growth, development, reaching out into the unreached areas. Uh, Brother Clyde Morgan, who founded AFM. I don't know if you've heard of AFM. What Adventist does it Front stand for? Adventist Frontier Missions. Probably most people have heard of it. Yes. People in missions, anyway. Yes, and he was the director of that for 22 years. And now he's uh, founded a, uh, a consultancy, consulting business or ministry that um, looks at, 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 at tracks the progress of the church as far as growth into the unreached. And so he's got a blog and we saw a blog entry that he made and it was very in interesting and insightful and so we asked if he would join us on the show tonight and he said yes. Okay. So he'll be joining us via Skype. Okay. So it's kind of exciting. Yeah. I'm excited. Are we Are we ready to call him? Well, not quite yet, because um, I wanted to take a couple of minutes to talk about Mission TV. Okay. <laughs> and we um, are trying to make progress step by step. We're moving out in faith. This whole venture has been a faith venture. Just using little, bit, little by little, a little bit here, a little bit there, what the Lord gives us to take a step by step. And um, it's pretty amazing what God has done with yeah. people that are willing. Amen. Yeah. Um, we've got a volunteer staff, although some of them uh, receive a stipend. Most of the, everyone here is here because they want to be. Right. Mm -hmm. And their heart is in it, and it's a sacrifice for each person. But in addition to that, the equipment that we use is like, you know, we buy stuff off, off of eBay. I mean, <laughs> our server... The first show we did live, remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we How did, could we forget? <laughs> <laughs> we did a live because the server wasn't working. Right. So we couldn't, you know, stream any programs. So we had just the week before put in the equipment to, um, to be able to do live. Mm -hmm. um, before that, we hadn't been able to. So we were planning, like, in, in six months, we were going to do a live show. You yeah. try that. It's like... It happened that evening. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. But since then, we still have the same server. And this is a server I bought in 2009 off of eBay for $400. So it's already, you know, end of life when I bought it. And that was four years ago. Well, <laughs> five years ago now. So um, we still got that server. Um, the cameras that we have are actually little consumer models. You know, little Canon consumer Vixias. We bought them for $300, $350 for the cameras. Mm -hmm. And um, they're amazing. God really led in us getting these because they have a sp the specific signal that not all consumer cameras have that actually works with our switcher. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so it puts out a really nice signal for what it is, but we have real challenges with controlling the cameras. You know, the zoom, the focus. We have to 
you know, get into the menu and touch the screen to get it to focus or to change exposure. It's really... And even when it's in focus, it doesn't look like it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or the plant behind us will be in focus and we'll be like, we're focusing on the face. Yeah, exactly. And so um, there's a lot of things we can't do. And also the image quality, the color, is, is, isn't as good as it could be. And so that's kind of like the next step that we're wanting to take is an equipment step. And we're, we're stepping up, by, we've stepped out by faith so far, and we're wanting to... Can you tell us what you did today? Today, we just, we were looking at, I'm trying to figure out how to get large sensor cameras in to get a more cinematic, kind of intimate feel, look. Um, I've been using the DSLR, you know, the Canon 7D, to shoot that show with Doug Van in Bangkok. I shot with him for eight months, and I love the look. And so, but that doesn't output a signal that we can use here live. It just records into the chip inside. So we finally found a camera that can output a really, you know, the, the signal clean, okay? Mm -hmm. It's uh, eight, $900 for the camera and lens. It's the Nikon D5300. And so I says, well, I want to check it out before we like buy one. Because for us, $900 is like, might as well say 900,000, you know, that's a lot of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> Let's see, do I eat for three months or do I buy a camera? Hmm. <laughs> My kids yeah. vote on that one, so we, we rented it. 50 bucks, we can rent it and check it out. We checked it out today, and it, the signal's beautiful. It's really awesome, but we can't control the aperture in movie mm -hmm. mode. And some other things about it just doesn't work into, this, into the system. What does that mean? Like what the video that means looks we can't like? control the exposure. No, that's a in different video. video word. You need a different word. Like in, <laughs> in, in layman's terms. Uh, so when you zoom terms. in, it gets brighter. <laughs> no, darker. Or darker. Oh, and when that's you zoom you out, it gets... So right. it changes the amount okay. of light yeah, that the you're lenses, seeing. The lenses that go with that camera, the, le the less expensive lenses, are, um, they're not, they're not uh, uh, constant aperture. In other words, when you zoom in, it gets darker. <laughs> okay, so... If you have like five cameras and they're all zoomed in differently and every time you zoom it changes the exposure, it's going to be it's going to drive us nuts. It's, it's, so you'd have to get a constant aperture lens and that's at least 1400 bucks just for the lens. Mm -hmm. So you got a cheap camera, expensive lens. Lenses are good, you know, you can always use them later. But then we'd be getting into Nikon lenses and maybe in the future we want to switch to Canon. You know, that's kind of where I'm going. I like Canon because they're really into the video. Mm -hmm. And so um, finally decided, Lord, if you, if you open the door, we are going to start telling people about the need. $50,000 will get us five cameras, a new switcher, and possibly a new server so we can kind of upgrade because we're like three versions behind the current version of the software that we're serving from every day. Mm -hmm. And so $50,000 is what we're praying for right now. So we want to tell and you guys about that. And more hard drives too, right? More hard drives because, yeah, we're starting to... <laughs> we're full. The server's full. We have, okay, Can't put all new shows on there, have to delete old shows. All of our shows are uh, spread across like 12 or 15 drives. That yeah. we have, we just bought, we just spent 40 bucks to buy a database so we can track all of these drives. <laughs> so we'd like to buy a server that has, that everything, everybody shares off of that one server and all of our data gets stored on that one server and has a lot of drives in it and it can take care of us for a while. So all those things together would be about 50,000. Now that sounds like a lot of money, but in video, that's dirt cheap. It's cheap. Mm -hmm. yeah. In a I mean, studio. In a studio, yeah. Yes. yeah. I mean, you can, it's amazing if you can buy a studio camera for less than that much mm -hmm. money. I mean, I, they, Canon came out here with some lenses, and, and one lens was $40,000 just for the lens. It's a nice lens. <laughs> it better be. It better be. <laughs> yeah, was it gold-plated? The cameras, were, no. <laughs> the cameras to were really nice, too, and they were kind of spendy. Yes, yes. So we're, we're, um, we're, we're praying for uh, not much. But I believe that God wants his church to be aware of missions, Amen. to get involved with missions. I think that he is um, calling for his church to be part of missions. And that's what Mission TV is all about, is to call people that already have the truth, to take that truth and take it to people that do not have the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way that Jesus is going to come. Amen. So let's talk about what we've got going, the 
text that we have here, I think, is key. It's our key text. This gospel of the kingdom, we all know this very well, shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then, only then, mm -hmm. shall the end come. Yeah. Mrs. White talks about, and you know this statement very well, that which we fail to do during a time of relative mm -hmm. ease and peace, mm -hmm. we will have to do during a time when it's extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. And I would like to get as much done now because it's only going to get harder. It's mm -hmm. not going to get easier than it is now. It's just going to get harder. We've already noticed that. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> yeah you guys have been it's getting harder and harder. Missions yeah. for a lot of people that right now in countries like Ukraine, right. Venezuela, and even Thailand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thailand that has never With the been writing. Argentina hard really right to, now is very to preach. Mm. I mean, with all these changes in the government, it's getting harder yeah. and harder. Right now, it's just hard enough that it's like there's barriers to do God's work. You know, it's not like we're rolling over in bed and, 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 and waking and you know, putting your feet on the floor. It takes a little bit of effort, mm -hmm. a little bit of concentration, and a lot of prayer to do it, but can you imagine when, I mean, when it's illegal, completely mm -hmm. illegal, mm -hmm. it's going to be tough mm -hmm. when you become an outlaw for what you believe. And I think most of our people <clears throat> are not aware at all of how bad the situation is as far mm -hmm. as how many people in this world are unreached. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for saying that because that's what tonight's topic is really all about. The question is, how long will it take? And this is taken from, if you guys want to look it up, gficonsulting.wordpress.com. If you want to read that article during the show, you can kind of be up with what, is, what we're talking about, and maybe you can ask questions for Brother Morgan uh, while he's on Skype here in just a few minutes. But first, I want to kind of introduce the subject. <clears throat> okay, now, you, the, you guys that have been in the church for quite a while... And you also, I think, when you came into the church, mm -hmm. what did they measure the progress of our, of taking the church of the gospel to the world? Well, I read the article okay. tonight, and I thought, wow, this reminds me so much mm -hmm. of the impression that I got when I became a brand new Adventist, okay. and it, it was measured by our presence in countries, right. which is not mm -hmm. a very good way to determine. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Okay, and, and I've got these stats up here. I got these stats out of his blog. It says, as of 2010, the Seventh-day Adventist Church could be found in 209 countries. There's only 232 countries in the world recognized by the United Nations. That sounds like, I mean, that's 90%. Wow. Sounds impressive. Yeah. On first glance. But the problem was that, um, okay, there's 232 countries in the world where 90% as of 2010, but in 2000, we were in 86% of the countries of the world. But in 1980, we were in 87%. Hmm. So it's like, it's kind of like mean? going like... Well, I think the definition we of one. countries, no, I think it was the, the borders, Maybe the countries more, changed, more countries. I think. Yeah, okay. Possibly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah because I think there was, I mean, after 1980, there were, there were a lot of changes in, were, in yes. Europe. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So um, now what uh, Brother Morgan is, is recommending is that, um, that we consider measuring our progress by language groups. Mm -hmm. okay? And so we're going to bring him on the line and find out what, what that would do, what that would look like. Welcome to Mission TV. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. We, I don't know if you saw the show, but we were... Just talking about how many languages there are in, uh, that we have reached in the world today with the Adventist Church's uh, message. Yes, well, I, I did hear that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a little over 900 in terms of uh, languages in which uh, there is something in print or oral work is uh, going on. Okay. So... Um, and how, how do you arrive at that, at that number? How do you know that if there's 900? Well, the church has been tracking for many decades from close to the beginning, how many languages, first it was tracking how many languages it was printing publications in books, magazines and such. And then later began to track how many languages and which languages 
it was uh, carrying on oral work in the language. And so it has tracked that for many decades. Okay. And, um, so that's where the number comes from. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that we would consider that language group reached because obviously you can be preaching in a language or have some literature uh, published in that language without the language yet being reached, but it's the closest approximation we have. Okay. And so how many languages are we in, do you, you say, about 920? Yeah, about 920 or 21, I think, is the latest number. Okay, then how, how many languages are there in the world? Because that sounds like a lot of languages to be in. <laughs> yeah, there's about 7,000 uh, distinct oh. languages around wow. the world. 7,000? Correct. Wow. Uh, based on uh, the Ethnologue, which is um, sort of the gold standard for uh, tracking and uh, keeping track of languages around the world, it's a, uh, it's a publication that is uh, put out by the uh, linguistics arm of Wycliffe Bible Translators. Mm. 7,000, we still have 6,000 languages to go. Mm. Yeah, um, about 6,000, correct. Wow. <laughs> So what's our progress? How fast are we entering into these? Well, I've, I've uh, calculated uh, various time periods, and um, um, one that uh, it has, is helpful for uh, estimating is uh, I tracked from uh, 1975, between 1975 and 2010, which is a 35-year period. And um, mm -hmm. and then if you if you extend that line out, and if we continued at exactly the same rate as we did uh, on average over those thirty five years, and you extended that out, it would it would take a little over six hundred years before you got to about seven thousand. Mm. Wow. I don't think that's the pace at which we want to continue. No, right, <laughs> right. Now, Pastor Bob Lemon, uh, the treasurer of the GC, at yeah. the last GC session in 2010 in Atlanta, he stated that the average North American gives to missions to the church about $21 a year to foreign missions. Yeah, it could be, could be. Could that be one of the factors? Well, certainly, it, it could be one of the factors. Uh, certainly, the church uh, can can use uh, more funds uh, to help in the mission uh, effort. Um, probably more. I know we don't necessarily always see it this way, but probably more needed is, as Jesus said, um, the harvest is is right. ready, but the laborers are few. Mm. Pray for a harvest. You know, for laborers, mm. um, I've often said you don't find anywhere in Scripture where it says there's a shortage of money. Pray for money, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it does say that about laborers. Mm. And I'm not saying that I'm not saying that we don't need to pray for money. I, <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of carrying out the gospel, um, the greater need mm. is laborers. I. I recently uh, spoke to a, a group of elders, actually, just last weekend, and I uh, shared with them how that uh, in the 22 years that I led uh, Evidence for Intermissions, mm -hmm. I think we ever failed to put someone in the field or keep them in the field due to lack of money. Mm -hmm. But there were many times that we were unable to respond to a request because we couldn't get the laborers, mm. good missionaries. Mm. Mm. So the greater need is laborers. Really, if we get the laborers, uh, God will, will uh, provide the funds. Mm. Amen. So then um, what is it that, uh, now I know that you started AFM in the, was that the 70s or the 80s? Uh, mid 80s. Mid 80s. And that was that in response to a trend that you were seeing happening? It was a, a somewhat, you could say, somewhat in response to uh, to a need. Mm -hmm. uh, when I went as a student missionary, I guess about uh, 15 years earlier or mm -hmm. something like that, when I was in college, um, I had 
I learned about uh, from the uh, missionary, the, the uh, full-time missionary that we were uh, working with there. He shared with us one day how a year or so earlier he uh, he had met a man from another island. This was in uh, the Marshall Islands mm-hmm. in Micronesia. And he had met a man from another island, an outer island, who had learned about what he was doing. And he said, oh, please come to my island. I'll give you land. I'll, uh, you know, build a church, build a school. Mm-hmm. And uh, at that time I realized, you know, I mean, <laughs> there was no way there were anybody was going to be sent to that to that island anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet you wouldn't be taking the place of a national worker because – these missionaries we were serving with were the very first Adventist mission, full-time missionaries in the Marshall Islands. Mm. Uh, so, so there were no national workers that, to take the place of. Mm-hmm. And yet there was yet there was this appeal and call for for uh, for mission work. So mm-hmm. that was that was the first experience. And over the over the next uh, 10, 15 years, I would I would learn about yet another place where there was an appeal, but where there were, you wouldn't be taking the place of a national worker. Mm-hmm. And yet uh, the impression uh, was, was given that we don't need missionaries much anymore, especially mm-hmm. ministers. And yet I knew about these many places where we didn't need missionaries, mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. ministers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so um, it was, it was, uh, that was probably one of the main uh, impetus, uh, one of the main uh, factors in the impetus to uh, start AFM to send missionaries to Unreach, to places like that where there was a need, where you wouldn't be taking the place of a national worker. And uh, so that was okay. part of the reason. All right. And AFM is doing a wonderful work now, reaching those uninjured yes. areas. Um, are there very many other organizations or branches of the church that are doing this, that are focusing on this? I'm not aware of any other organization or branch of the church that is exclusively focusing on uh, working for the unreached, identifying and working for the unreached. Hmm. Okay. Now, you, um, you're, since you left AFM, you're doing GFI Consulting, which, can you describe what you do there? Yes, it primarily focuses on uh, still the unreached, but uh, now identifying uh, the unreached, who they are, where they are. When mm-hmm. I was still um, leading AFM back in the late 90s, I had a real aha moment uh, on one occasion in which I, I thought, you know, what if Jesus suddenly appeared in the room and said to us, I want you to reach all the remaining unreached people groups mm. in the next 20 years, in the next mm. 25 years. Mm. Mm. Now, if he appeared and said that to us, we would have to take it seriously, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I thought, you know, what, what would I do if I was going to set about that tax seriously mm-hmm. to do that in the next 20, 25 years? What would I do? Right, right. And one of the things that I realized is if I'm going to do that, I have to know what the parameters of the task are. Mm -hmm. I have to know, okay, so how many unreached groups are there? Where are they? Mm -hmm. What size are they? Mm -hmm. And I realized, you know, as a church, we don't know that. Wow. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the parameters Mm -hmm. of the task are. Right. How can we meaningfully plan and strategize to accomplish a task like that when we don't even know what the parameters are? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That makes so sense. So that's what I've been, uh, that's the main thing that I've been working on uh-huh. in GFI Consulting. And uh, the way I found out about your ministry was um, I was in the, at, a, at a meeting at the uh, uh, Southern Asia Pacific Division. Mm-hmm. And they had brought you on board to kind of map out the languages in that division. Right. And right. I have the map. It's right around the corner. I'm just going to go get it. Mm-hmm. Hold on. <laughs> you know, while he's gone, I wanted to ask a question, and that is, how widely known are these statistics that you're coming up with? Is this widely known in our church? Uh, no. 
Uh, I don't think it is. Now, obviously, those divisions uh, that I've done this for, and so far I've done it for three divisions, and Southern Asia Pacific uh, that he's getting the map of is one of them. Uh, obviously, they learned this, but in terms of this kind of information being widely known, no, it's not. It needs to be. Absolutely. Uh, but it, to my knowledge, it isn't. How can it be made known? Is the church taking any steps to publicize this information that you're finding? Uh, no, not particularly. Okay. The church uh, is aware? There, 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 there have been some conversations. I've had some conversations with uh, archives and, and statistics at the GC, and they have indicated an interest in uh, publishing uh, the information uh, perhaps as a as a, a part of or a supplement to the annual st uh, statistical report which certainly would be a, a good thing don't you think we should have a special issue of the review dedicated to this kind of information <laughs> <laughs> yes and i think we should have a uh, uh, a website and a lot of other things yeah. are dedicated to this. I mean, there needs to be intentional focus on, on, on this task if we're really going to accomplish it anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to commend you for the work you're doing. I really do. I think it's wonderful that you're, someone is doing this. Amen. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we're definitely, this is a key part of what Mission TV is all about. But here's the map. This is kind of what, what you've done kind of looks like. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, Southern Asia Pacific Division. Actually, since since I did that uh, initial project for them, uh, uh, Pakistan was added to that division. Mm -hmm. And the, at the beginning of 2012, they brought me back and had me do Pakistan as well. But there's an inter interesting thing about this division. It's one of three divisions in the world that uh, combined three of the church's divisions have about two-thirds of the world's language groups. Mm. Mm. Wow. Let that sink in. Three divisions has about two-thirds of the world's language groups. Okay. I got another map I got to show wow. you that I think you'll like. And this division, right Southern Asia Pacific Division, is one of them. It's number two. The, the division with the, with the most language groups is West Central Africa Division, has nearly 1,800 language groups. Uh, this one, uh, Southern Asia Pacific Division, has over 1,600 language groups. And the third division is South Pacific Division with uh, a little over 1,300 or, yeah, about 1,300 or so language groups. Okay, so what's this? This says there's more people that live inside that circle than the rest of the world. I don't know if we can see. Well, that's pr yes, yes. That, yeah. that would be true, yeah. But yeah. it says over yeah. here that 90% of all Christian giving goes to the people that live here. Wow, wow. So, a little bit of disparity there. <laughs> Indeed. So, you need to show them the chart. That's the okay. Church. No, let's, yeah. So then, let's move on. He was saying it was West Central Africa, Southern okay. Asia Pacific Division, and South Pacific Division. Okay. So then, yeah, those th those three divisions have uh, about two thirds of the world's language groups, hmm. and this division, the Southern Asia Pacific Division, uh, two of two of the unions in that division have two thirds of the language groups in that division. One wow. of those unions is East uh, Indonesia Union. Um, That's oh, this one. Right. Correct. Okay. Uh, about 500 language groups in that union, in that yeah. one union. The other union is Southeast Asia Union, uh, which mm. is uh, oh, uh, Thailand, uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos, and on down through Malaysia and across the top of, uh, of Borneo there and such. Mm -hmm. uh, um, also with about 500 uh, language groups. Wow. So wow. there are, are a lot of language groups in those two, in those two unions. Yeah, we, we heard this story just a, a few months ago when Pastor Doug was here about uh, somebody that was working down here, a missionary, 
and mm -hmm. um, there were 511 unreached language groups in this area, and they were doing a two-week evangelism series, and a, a chief that somehow learned a different language came and, and listened, and he was converted. He was asking for a missionary to come into his language group to teach them. That was unreached. That was unreached, and they said, we don't have anybody, so they did a, a one-week training for him and sent him back. Now there's only 510 more languages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let me point out one other thing about this uh, division. Uh -huh. uh, across the bottom there is, uh, is Indonesia. Mm -hmm. It's, as you can see, it's mainly red, which means it's uh, mainly unreached. Uh, we know, of course, that it is predominantly uh, Muslim, so we would anticipate uh, the challenge there. Mm -hmm. So seeing red there is not surprising. And up the Malay Peninsula, we're not surprised there because it's also mm -hmm. predominantly Muslim. Yeah, that's up here. Right. Yeah. Now, there's three areas that are predominantly animist. Mm. One is the uh, mountains there of, of uh, Southeast Asia from uh, Vietnam up through Cambodia and Laos. This area. That range of mountains there where the red is. Uh -huh. so those are predominantly animist background people. And then the southern part of the island of Borneo, Kalimantan province of uh, Indonesia. Oh, down here. Correct. You, you can see that that's mainly red. Uh -huh. Those are also predominantly animist background. Mm. Uh -huh. Over in uh, Papua, the eastern half of, uh, or western half, I should say, of uh, the island of uh, Papua, right? Whatever. Uh, that's also predominantly uh, animus background. Now, animus have traditionally responded more readily to the gospel than other hmm. other uh, kinds of religious groups, and yet yeah. you see most of the red outside of the Muslim areas uh, in this division are animist mm -hmm. areas. Hmm. Hmm. Why in the world are so many of those unreached? Well, you look into it a little bit more and you discover that the uh, transportation infrastructure in those areas is uh, is not well developed. Mm. Uh, some places, of course, uh, tends to be non-existent. Mm. And so it's really going to take people. In some cases, you, of course, you can use air services. Um, in other places, you might be able to have river navigation. Uh, but in some cases, you really need young people who would be willing to just say, oh, okay, I'll hike in one, two, three, four, five days to get to the place where I need to be. We need that kind of dedication, and I'm, I'm confident there, there are young people around the world who would be willing to do that kind of thing. So we need some backpacker missionaries. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, have a, we play a video um, a movie on our on our channel called uh, Beyond the Next Mountain, and it's about this man that hiked up into some place in India, spent some time there, lived with the natives, dressed like them, ate their food, and then he was kicked out by the other missionaries because he had gone native. Mm -hmm. And then 20 years, 30 years later, he was an old man, maybe 40 or 50 years later, he was an old man, didn't realize that that, that gospel had caught on, and they had sent one of their tribesmen out to learn how to read and write, develop their own language, translate the entire Bible, and then after he got it all translated, went and met that guy mm. just before he passed away. Mm. And mm. Uh, really beautiful touching, story. It is beautiful touching. story. Well, walk it. us through, tell us a little bit about the red and the yellow and the green. What does that actually mean? Okay, uh, as you can see, this is a detailed uh, uh, assessment, uh, a map showing the detailed assessment. There's three shades of red, uh, indicating uh, different levels of, of, of unreached. Those are all considered unreached. Mm -hmm. um, the darkest red, there are no known uh, Adventist believers in those among those language groups. Mm. In the uh, medium red, you might say, uh, there are a few uh, members who meet in some sort of a, a fellowship group, maybe a branch Sabbath school, Bible study group, maybe even a company of believers, but there's no organized church. Mm. In the light red, there is at least one church, but the members are so few and the percentage of the language group is so small that it would be unrealistic to consider it reached. Mm -hmm. An example of that would be in, in, uh, in this uh, 
uh, division would be over in uh, in Burma, Myanmar. The main language group there is uh, Burmese. Ah, correct. And even though, as you can see, it's it's uh, colored green because uh, there there is a church there and enough members. It's there are about thirty million in that language group. Hmm. With uh, the church reported about five hundred believers out of hmm. thirty million, out of thirty million. Wow! And that's that's the uh, green part. That's the green part. <laughs> now, uh, <coughs> another another example another example in a different part of the world would be in Turkey. There, there's about fifty million ethnic Turks uh -huh. uh, in that language group. About fifty million, maybe a little more. And with approximately uh, 25 or so uh, Adventist members. 25? Uh, approximately. And that's considered reached? No, no, no. You can't. Okay. Even though there's, what I'm saying is, even though there's an organized church, it's so, the, the presence is so small mm -hmm. that you still have to consider it as least reached. Okay. And so those are the three red areas, and then the two yellow, the, the two yellow uh, colors yeah, are language groups where we have a foothold, but where again the the degree of presence, the number of believers, uh, is uh, small enough that it needs special attention. We, if we walked away from those without giving them focused attention, mm -hmm. the work would likely uh, die, mm -hmm. shrivel away. Wow. Mm -hmm. In the green, we have it's well established. There's, there tends to be good infrastructure. Uh, uh, there tends to be some institutions. There tends to be uh, many members. Uh, some of them uh, thousands of members. Some even tens of thousands of members. And so that's the uh, that's the uh, scale, uh, all the way from none, no known believers to well established and, and, and such. Okay. And we, we really need to look at those green areas where there's where there's well established and identify uh, churches and areas and people who, you know, give uh, evidence of real spiritual vitality mm -hmm. and, and do training and involve them in helping to send them out to help reach the unreached. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the term reached is kind of unique because um, America is considered a reached country, but still there's much work to be done. So even though it's reached, there's still a lot of work to be done there. Well. True, true. And in, and in work that I've done here, I've done a little bit of work for conferences here in, in North America. And... Um, both in terms of geographic uh, identifying the reach of local churches and 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 thus showing what uh, territory and what uh, uh, population uh, concentrations uh, are beyond the reach uh, the current reach of the church and then also looking at uh, ethnolinguistic groups especially in in urban areas that uh, are unreached. So, wow. sure, there's still there's still uh, work to be done here. Yeah, as I'm, well. I'm just curious. What would you say uh, to the people? And we hear it all the time. People say when we bring up the need in foreign missions, they'll often say, "Oh, you know, they can take care of themselves. We've got so much work here in America. We've got to focus on America." What would you say to those people? I suspect they have never been overseas into a mission setting. <laughs> um, if if they if they had that experience, uh, they really couldn't even say that. Mm -hmm. um, the situation in many other parts of the world is so so uh, desperately unreached, mm -hmm. and no no realistic uh, uh, opportunity for them to hear the gospel. I mean, there is no comparison. I mean, mm -hmm. we could sit here in any in any community in 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 North America, virtually certainly in the U.S., and we have uh, you know, as far as Christianity is concerned, we have a dozen churches within how, within what distance of us, and we have mm -hmm. Christian bookstores and all kinds of Christian mm -hmm. radio stations and TV stations and books and and our language, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And you go to many of these other places, and they have. None of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Zero, zilch, nada, nothing. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And no, and no living messenger. Hmm. Well, we're going to try to get somebody. There is one, one comment on your groundbreaking article. Uh, one comment, and I kind of had an idea who it might be. He's not, there. <laughs> He's not there? No, his internet's too bad. Oh, his internet died. Oh, that's yeah. too bad. Anyway, um, Andrew Michelle <laughs> uh, had a really beautiful comment, and if you guys go to, that, uh, to his article, I think you'll see his comment. In fact, we'll go there right now and see what he had to say. Um, uh, here's Andrew's comment. Uh, oh, it's up here. How long will it take? Now, you know, it sounds like a lot of work, but actually, 6,000 languages with a, with a church 7, of... 7,000. 7,000. Well, we've got... We're in 900, well, so 6,000 languages left over. With a church of 17 million, mm-hmm. we could knock that out in a few years. Mm-hmm. With God's help? Absolutely. Amen. But this is, this is what Andrew said. He says, wow, this site has great material for SDAs interested in missions. I can't believe I'm the first comment. He's actually the only comment. Mm-hmm. If folks understood the importance of reaching the unreached and confronting obstacles to missions, this article should have thousands of comments and feedback. Why isn't Clyde Morgan more well-known to lay people? It's a lamentable tragedy that there is so little interest in reaching the unreached. Now, he's in a people group that is like 97% unreached, mm. massively unreached people group. This man's voice, as well as a few others who promote now. missions, need to be prioritized over other issues. Women's ordination, and I think this is mm-hmm. important, I'm going to say it, women's ordination and other issues are so unimportant compared to reaching unreached people groups. Absolutely. As soon as WO is settled, Satan will just stir up another issue to keep us from thinking about Saudi Arabia, Maldives, Vietnam, etc., etc., etc. The most encouraging statement in this article is, that's a long time, however, it is not the necessary time. Mm -hmm. It's so crazy to realize that if there is a more united and collective effort to reach the unreached, the Great Commission could be banged out in just a few years by the grace of God. Mm-hmm. And um, I like that statement, it's not the necessary time. If you could close with that, because we'd like to, um, we've got a young couple that's actually launching into a relatively, quite a, uh, an unreached area, and we want to just say hi to them before they go, because they are leaving next week. Yeah. And um, they, uh, it's a beautiful story, but if you could just respond to that, um, not a necessary time. Sure. Sure, it's absolutely not necessary. Uh, under God, uh, by the power of God, uh, it can be done in a much shorter period of time. Mm. The, you just do the math, and there's various ways of, of accomplishing it. Uh, just a couple of ways, uh, just for interest's sake, that I've calculated it. One, you could take uh, all of the uh, graduates from uh, tertiary-level schools, Adventist uh, universities around the world, and just uh, something like, uh, I've, it's been a while since I did it, but uh, 10% or less of those graduates, uh, uh, if you took them each year, you could do it. Just wow. with mm. 10% or less of those graduates from mm. tertiary level schools, wow. Adventist graduates. Mm-hmm. Another, nice. another way of looking at it is, um, yeah, there's about 17 million members. Uh, we know that somewhere between 50 and 60 percent are, are, you know, attend church uh, each week. Mm. So if you base it on that, that's about 10 million members around the world. Mm-hmm. If we ask for just one half mm-hmm. of one percent of those members to, to be trained and sent to unreached language groups, you mm-hmm. know how many we would have? Just one half of one percent would have about 50,000 wow. new laborers. Mm-hmm. That, would, wow. that would be an average of eight people for each unreached language group. Mm-hmm. And you don't need wow. eight for every language group because some are very small. You could have two or four. That mm-hmm. means you could have 10 or 12 or 16 in other larger language groups. Wow. It's, the numbers are there. It can be done if we will focus on it intentionally. Okay. Praise the Lord, man. Do, do you have that that information that you just gave? Do you have it in uh, written up somewhere in your blog anywhere that we can actually? I, I haven't written published it on the blog yet. Okay. I will uh, seek to do that in the near future. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the next step then will be to really train people to be missionaries from every church. 
Yeah, there really needs to be a paradigm shift away from uh, uh, kinds of things that that uh, Andrew was talking about, and uh, and and focusing on the task. Absolutely. And when we begin to focus intentionally on the task, we really do need to to focus on discipleship, involving uh, nurturing people to spiritual maturity, and then training them and organizing them and sending them out to help reach the unreached. Mm -hmm. But it can be done. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. It will be great to have that information also. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. what you just said, it again. will, yes. you know, it will just blow people's mind. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I think that would, you know, people, when they see that, how, how easy it could be hmm. with the resources that we have in people, you know, people, I think, would get fired up. And when people get fired up, because some happen. people think it is impossible. Yeah. In some cases, like, forget it. The work is, well, I was, I was overwhelmed in India. Mm. But, you know, your numbers, it's just. Yeah. It's encouraging yeah. Yeah. Yes. to get involved and get started. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Brother Morgan. God Thank bless you, you and much. your work. And mm. know that you have partners here at Mission TV. Mm -hmm. You're welcome right. anytime. <laughs> Thank you for your work, too. God, right. bless God bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. Okay, let's see if we can get well, Jessica and uh, mm. Brian on here. This is a young couple just had a baby, and they're mm. launching. November, December. So, yeah, so. sometime in there. They're launching to go to Thailand. You can see their picture there. Here we go. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Oh, look at the little guy. <laughs> How cute. All right. It's the Thai family. Sawadika. Sawadika. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Your friend has taught you well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The internet. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was your Thai friend teaching you. No, not yet. She uh. claims she can teach anyone how to speak Thai in like three hours, though. Oh, my. Wow. I'd like yeah. to take that class. Yeah. <laughs> Have you learned how to order Pad Thai yet? No. <laughs> well, let me teach you. You go into the restaurant and say, Pad Thai? Yeah. <laughs> and you also say, J, because that's vegetarian. Okay, ah. that's good to know. Yeah, Sweet. yeah. Okay. So when are you guys leaving? We fly out of Seattle next Tuesday, or this, yeah, a week from tomorrow. A week from tomorrow. <clears throat> and what all did you have to do in order to go? Sell everything. Not much, yeah, just sell <laughs> everything and, uh, and go. <laughs> Buy a ticket? Yeah, oh, buy a ticket, yeah. get a visa. <laughs> and yeah. what, what are you planning on doing when you get there? Um, well, our, our first focus is going to be on learning the language and the culture. Mm -hmm. uh, our family has dedicated uh, full time. We plan to live there. And so to be um, efficient long term, uh, a friend of ours, John Wood, advised <laughs> us to uh, learn the language and the culture, make that our first priority so that we could be more effective long term. Mm -hmm. And what inspired you guys to step out in this venture? It was a, a lot of things, but we actually were asked to run a prayer room at a camp meeting called Faith Camp. And uh, I went there. Yeah. <laughs> there? yeah, we saw you there, actually. <laughs> and no one came the first night to the prayer room. It was the 4th of July, so we listened to the first meeting. And we were both very convicted on, uh, we, on going into the foreign mission field. We had been working as Bible workers collectively for five years previous to that mm -hmm. and uh, felt the call. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. And so what, um, what have you been doing lately? What kinds of work have you been doing lately? <laughs> 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 we knew we needed to raise some money and we didn't feel extremely comfortable going to churches and getting up front and saying, hi, we're going into the mission field. Do you want to give us money? And so we <laughs> prayed about what to do and I don't know if it's going to fit in the screen, but we made this sign that says, We'll preach for Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife made a flyer, and we sent it to all the, we sent it to the conference here, the Upper Columbia Conference, and they sent it to every pastor wow. and every Bible worker in the, the conference. And so we had multiple churches hire us. Um, I had training as an evangelist, and so I went and did prophecy seminars at different churches with the purpose of that money going solely to our mission work in Thailand. Mm. Wow. And so we basically traveled around the North Pacific Union doing speaking engagements to raise money. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. 
So what, um, what was it that made you decide to finally purchase your ticket? That's a hard question. We, uh, our son is four months old. When he was two weeks old, he had brain surgery. And we kind of changed our minds about going. We thought it might not be the best idea. And we spent a lot of time praying. And we had a lot of doors that seemed open. And we started going down those roads. And they all closed. And so we prayed. And God really miraculously provided the medical equipment that we needed for his, uh, he has a programmable valve in his in his skull. God provided the equipment for free. The company gave it to us so wow. that we could uh, have the means of doing anything if there was an issue. And so we just really saw that as, as God opening the door. And so we stepped wow. through it. Wow. That's amazing. That is. <laughs> Praise <Yeah>. the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> So God does open doors for people that are really <laughs> Yeah, he does. <laughs> and close some others. Yeah. yeah. Where are you going again? Going to Bangkok, Thailand. Okay, so now that you're going to be there, that city will be reached. Um, <laughs> yeah, because there's only 12 million people there. Oh. So we figured that we'd just split up and we could get it all in about a year. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple of friends that are over there, too, that have... Just they, they beat us to it. We told them we were going, and they got the, a bug, and they beat us over there. They they left uh, at the beginning of February. So what are they saying? What 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 feedback are you hearing from them? They're learning the hard way, and we're asking lots of advice before we go. Over there. Really? <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a dear old friend. I actually know him from before we were both Christians, and so it's mm. amazing. You never know where life's going to end up. If you had told us seven years ago we'd be in Thailand together as missionaries, we would have thought you were crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we are both Seventh-day Adventists and going to Bangkok. <laughs> like, wow. That's you never know what God's up to. Yeah. He does yeah. amazing things. Oh, he surely does. <laughs> That's so exciting. <laughs> it is exciting. It's it's really hard because all your friends and family are really sad, and you're so excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can't stop smiling, and they're crying. I feel really heartless. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be, it, the roles will switch when we get over there. I'm sure I'll have the sad days. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there will be days, but... Well, we wanted to kind of say hi to you guys because we figured we'd, this is the before. Later on, we'll catch up to you with the after. Not, yeah. not after, during. Okay, during. the during. Yeah, during, yes. Well, John, you had yeah. asked what, what inspired us or what motivated us to finally get our tickets. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing that we heard at that faith camp, you, you shared on giving and how the Israelites did it in the past. And you, I'm going to paraphrase greatly, but basically you were talking about how they had given roughly 25%. And you started talking about if you make this much and you know someone living on this much, why don't you try living on this much? Mm -hmm. And my wife and I had been at that time giving a double tithe. We had mm -hmm. been convicted of that. And so we felt convicted to give more. And so we were paying our tithe to the church and then giving an additional tithe with a, an added offering into the foreign mission field. Mm -hmm. And we heard someone say, you know, your, your heart is where your money is or mm -hmm. you put your money where your heart is. And all of our money was going into the foreign mission field. So it was kind of, you know, inevitable that God was going to, to take us there. That's where our heart was at. Praise Amen. The Lord. That's fantastic. Praise the Lord. Wow. But I'll tell you, as we gave more, we never suffered want. And we had wow. far more than Amen. previously. Yeah. So. Wow. It was amazing. If you want to see God work, give more to him. That's wow. right. <laughs> so you guys are launching. Are you, like, really strapped for cash? Are you really... <laughs> No, we, uh, we have raised, in our budget, we haven't been there, so we don't know exactly, but in our budget, we have um, at least a year of living expenses, including language school. And the um, tickets and visa and everything. Yeah, that we've, that we've saved. That doesn't include any extra mission-type work or purchasing things to hand out to people, but uh, yeah, God is, has blessed. And we feel like it's even more than that. We think we probably have a good two years' worth. Wow. So. Wonderful. So God, God is, is blessed. Yeah, he sold our truck today, too. So oh, I'm, really I'm going after this interview to, to make delivery of it. So. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay. Raised a ton of money at our yard sale. And my, we had people just coming over and donating stuff for us to be able to sell and keep the money for. And mm. It was great. That's nice. Praise the Lord. That's really nice. Well, how do we keep in touch with you if people want to see what you're doing? Well, right now we haven't started up the a, a, blog site um, so it's just by email um, okay. it'd be the number two and then tim as in timothy t-i-m-t-u-t-o-r second timothy tutor 
at gmail.com. Okay. And uh, you can email there and we'll add you to the email list. All right. Or, or the woman at well. That's our last name is at well. So I'm the woman at the well. Oh. That's That's cool. Cute. <laughs> that's your email address, I'm guessing. That's my email. Okay. The woman at well. Yeah. At email. <laughs> Very All good. Right. Well, we're planning to come visit you sometime out there. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So God bless you guys. Thank you. And, we'll be uh, praying for you. Yeah. yeah. So. Thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, thank you for having us. And All have right. a safe trip. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. God bless. Bye-bye. 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 Well, I just have to say what an inspiration. Amen. Yes. You know, really, I, I hope that people who watch this show, the future broadcasts of it, will see the... What a wonderful example and the courage that takes. Mm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that neat? I mean, here we, this, uh, Brother Morgan says it's not that hard. It, it, with the number of people that are, mm-hmm. that are active, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, it wouldn't take that much of a I percentage. I think we're going to have to put those numbers together. Yes. In, in a big graphic because, I mean, yeah. you think it's a lot, but we don't need that much. Right. right. And if we take that promise that we read at the beginning... Uh-huh that God would give us that gift of speaking in new tongues. I mean, imagine how fast it could Mm -hmm. go. That would be so exciting. (laughs) We don't see more of that because we just don't go. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of people Mm -hmm. saying, but we don't see miracles. We don't say we're not going to see until we go. Until we need them. And I think we don't really believe it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's probably one reason we don't really go is because we don't really believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when we well, go, we stay, take that little step, step by step. We see God work, and it gets right. exciting, doesn't it? Does. It? Mm-hmm. it does. And, it does. Uh, and the joy starts to bubble over. You want more. You want to go, go, go. That's yeah. right. So. Well, it's been a full show. We didn't, we didn't talk a lot, but our guests did, and that was, it was really good. Well, it was. Yeah. It was really good. I was in shock. Yeah. yeah. Just, <laughs> Just I listening. Hope, I hope, you know, people can realize what we're talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like God is not waiting for us to do huge thing is that right. feel them like mm-hmm. Gideon mm-hmm. 300 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll do mm-hmm. the rest mm-hmm. but we don't even have that yeah, so yeah. Sad. yeah. but I, I think if the call was made mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it wouldn't be that hard to get that many people mm-hmm. if you the know call how many was made people are doing like extreme sports and stuff I mean dying for mm-hmm. doing for thrill. dumb things for what <laughs> I mean if you give a, if you give purpose mm-hmm. to the youth Mm-hmm. Like he said, mm-hmm. they will do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you all for joining us tonight, and I want to thank our viewers also for joining us. Our topic for next week is um, don't wait too long. No, don't, don't wait. wait until you feel like it. Yeah. That's our topic. <laughs> uh, some of you were watching last week, and you know that we had a vote going to see what our topic would be for this week. And the second runner-up was don't wait until you feel like it. So that will be our topic for next week, and I hope you can join us next Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern for the Mission TV Live. God bless you. 